Oh my God. Get my six. Particularly watch this tree and what may or may not potentially creep around from the side. <sighs> Guys, <clears throat> now there are five Bigfoot Sasquatch. Files volumes. Oh crap. I left those last two words off the title. <sighs> Well, that's going to piss a lot of people off. You know how easy it is to piss people off on the internet? I mean, you don't even have to try, and it just happens. <clears throat> I'm going to piss them off big time here in a few days. But tonight, as you get my six, as we look, and footsteps, as we're looking for and listening for what may or may not be back here in the woods behind my home, We are going to be reading from October nights. We are at October 27, story called Lost Soldier. <clears throat> now what I mean by there are now five Bigfoot Sasquatch. No, I didn't put files and volumes. Oh. I need to like try to remember to go back and edit that. Okay, Bigfoot Sasquatch Files Volume 5 is now available on Amazon in print and Kindle. And the link to all my books is in the description box below. Um, so, I'm going to answer some questions here real quick and then we're going to get into our reading. Tonight's reading isn't that long, so I've got time for this. Let me pull up a chair here. Have a seat. I'm a little winded. I was just sawing up some more ginormous red oak firewood here for a little bit. Um, so one of our followers, Sherry Ember, asked if I ever wrote um, Trilogy of Terror Volume 3. The answer is yes, but it was never published. And the reason why is because it's one of the stories that almost went into this book, but, but I haven't, I've, I've alluded to it. It was written with a pen uh, that I got from a witch doctor in the Philippines. And it was it was kind of like one of those demons at the crossroads deal. You know, I didn't sell my soul, but we kind of um, we did some business. And she gave me a pen, a cursed pen, and she warned me about uh, its use. I didn't believe her because I just you know I didn't I thought it was just all superstitious stuff. And so anyway, uh, I wrote one story in Trilogy of Terror two um, with that pen. And then, of course, typed it into a Word doc. And in that story, uh, I kind of like destroyed a place, uh, you know, fictitiously. A um, place I just don't like. And then it happened in real life, exactly how I wrote it in the story. That scared the crap out of me. Um, I had already written <laughs> the Trilogy of Terror Part 3 with this pen. But after that happened, I decided I was not going to publish it. I destroyed the manuscript. Um... I'm not going to tell you anything about that pen as far as the whereabouts or the location or whatnot. Um, <clears throat> but the damage was done. Uh, again, by the time I wrote part three, the 
community that I, you know, fictitious, based on a real place that I destroyed in part two, had not been destroyed yet, exactly how I'd written it in a book. So after that happened, um, I just wasn't going to, but anyway, the things I wrote in those stories since then have happened anyway. So it's not so much, I thought that by not publishing it, so if I were to publish those stories now, it'd be like, well, this guy's just writing about stuff that's just happened over the last few years. Everybody knows, knows about this. Well, the terrifying part, the story behind the story is that these things would have been believed to not, not even possible to happen at the time that I'd written them with that cursed coconut pen. It's made out of coconut wood. So that's the very creepy answer to that question. Now, what am I talking about pissing people off on the internet? People get pissed when you promote your books. <clears throat> I mean, it's, even if it's your channel, right? Okay, they get pissed when you sell merchandise, like those shirts. I promoted some hoodies the other night, and, and several of you actually bought them. Thank you. Um, thousands of you monthly buy my books. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> they get pissed when you make videos with weird titles. Uh, so some guy... He was pissed today. He said, that's it. This is absolutely the last video of yours I will ever watch. Oh. I prayed for him. I prayed that God would bring him and his household the same health, wealth, and prosperity that my, my household and myself so much enjoy. Then I banned him. <clears throat> But people are going to be real pissed off here in a few days because I'm going to be doing something that's just, you know, it just, I'm going to be making something available. It's not literature. It's art. It's a type of art. And I've been thinking about it for a long time. And it all goes back to what I said in the lecture at the end of Bigfoot Sasquatch the movie, which if you haven't seen that, you got to watch it. It's arguably the best Bigfoot Sasquatch movie ever, as well as the best, uh, Full-length featured film ever recorded exclusively on an iPhone 11 S Got to watch it. It's here on our, on our YouTube channel. Just go up there in the search box and type in Bigfoot Sasquatch the movie. He'll come up <clears throat> um, But at the end of that I pretty much says you know what if you've got something you enjoy doing just do it and and don't worry about what other people are gonna say That was a very loud tree knock. We have company here tonight. I think they're saying, get on with the story. Did you see that? It's like a ghost flew right through the forest. Something's throwing rocks at me now. It's either him, her, it, or they, or it's the return of the derelict. Speaking of derelicts, spoiler alert, tonight's story, we see the return of Jim Brown. And this isn't the last story he's going to be in. He takes us all the way through Halloween night. But now, my point, though, you got something you love doing, just do it. Who cares what people say? They're going to judge you anyway, no matter what you do and how you do it. All right. <clears throat> I'm like, blah, 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 blah. Got to slip into grandpa mode here. If it's like full bright, I can pretty much see okay, but it's almost dark now. So with no further ado, as my beautiful bride dearly, AKA Giggly Girl would say, go subscribe to her channel too. And Jenny Joe's channel. I just thought I'd throw those out there because that seems to piss people off too. The links to their channels is in the description box below, along with the links to all my marginally somewhat decently written, maybe potentially, books. Lost Soldier. <clears throat> well, here I was, so darn close to finishing up my Halloween anthology, I could taste it. Back in the Army, we'd say this was so close, you could finish standing on your head. Short timer. Don't even, even bother trying to open your chute because you're too close to the ground. And I was stuck. Writer's block. One of the things I love to do when I need inspiration is go out into the woods and sit. Listen. 
for stuff like that tree knock right there. Listen to nature, the spirits, like the one that may or may not have flown right over here a minute ago. All part of being an empath. And I did this for a good while, but nothing was coming. So I decided to do something else I'll often do when the words just aren't coming, and that's splitting firewood. You see, when you have a creative mind, one of the biggest obstacles to get in your way is that creative mind. Sometimes it just thinks and thinks and thinks and it thinks too much and all the noise is blocking out anything good. But when I chop wood, the madness stops. It has to stop or I'm liable to cut off a toe. I'd taken to splitting my wood as of late on a completely different part of our property. It's an odd location as it's simply in the middle of a field and next to a tree line that marks the boundary of mine and my neighbor's property on the other side. But you see, the thing about this location is that just inside the tree line, there's an overgrown cemetery. Nothing big, just people who'd lived in our house and on this land in the past. I know of three little girls buried there, the ones that died during the Spanish flu pandemic of 1918. But there are a couple more graves in there as well, and I have no idea who's buried in them, nor do any of my neighbors. These graves go back further than 1918, though not by much, as the house was built in 1903. My point of splitting wood here is that maybe, just maybe, I'd be out here someday, my mind clear of the noise, since I'd be focusing on the task at hand, and someone or something would communicate with me, tell me a story, tell me their story. These were my thoughts as I began splitting wood on a day too hot to be out there doing it, when I heard someone say, excuse me sir, from behind me. I turned around, thinking that son of a gun Jim Brown was back, because he still owed me that story, but it wasn't him. It wasn't him at all. It appeared to be someone outperforming in one of the Civil War reenactments, which are quite common throughout Virginia in the summer. He looked about 20 years old, and he was wearing a gray wool uniform. It looked just like the kind the Confederates wore during the Civil War. Man, you must be hot, I said, after turning and seeing him. He was walking up from the road. I'd at least take that jacket off. Too hot out here to be wearing wool. I wouldn't want to be caught out of uniform, he said, as he continued making his way toward me, repeatedly wiping sweat from his brow as he did. He'd take his cap off, wipe his brow, then put the cap on just long enough to take a step or two, then repeat the process. Y'all having a reenactment out this way? I asked. They usually have them down the mountain, away further in a huge field that's closer to the highway because they draw a lot of tourists. But I'd noticed they'd move them around sometimes. There's actually a lot of wealthy people who live in my area, just outside of Charlottesville, Virginia. And some of them are history buffs, and hell, actual historians. And I figured one of them might be putting on a reenactment for the weekend just for the fun of it. Sir, the young man said, I'm just trying to get home, and I think I am. But it don't look like it did when I left. And I ain't been gone but a month or so. Ah, I said, I get it. And I did. I'd been to a couple of those reenactments, and I visited a lot of the historic, historic spots around Virginia, like Mount Vernon, the home of George Washington, and Monticello, the home of Thomas Jefferson. We love going down to Colonial Williamsburg, and you see, the thing about these places is that when you go there, and you see the people working there who are dressed in costumes, period costumes, meaning the outfits the people of the times they're portraying actually wore, they're in character. And if you talk to them, you have to speak to them as if you're in the period they're portraying as well. And if you don't, they'll completely ignore you. I figured I'd play along. <clears throat> Where have you come from, Private? I asked, seeing his rank on his lapel. Charlottesville, he said. We was camped out on the Ravana River, just below Rio Hill. He finally closed his distance on me and was standing right beside me. Something seemed strange about him. Sound like I just heard a scream. He had the same sickly complexion to him that it, that old rascal Jim Brown had. Have a seat, I said, motioning to an unsplit stove length about a foot and a half in diameter that was sitting on its end. Thank you, he said. Tell me all about your troubles, I said, and of this home you cannot find. Perhaps I can help. Everything was fine, the young man said. We weren't expecting no trouble. But that blasted old Custer came in and got us by surprise and had us tucking our tails and running for the hills in seconds. The Custer, I said, is in General George A. Custer. That's the one, he said. 
He took his hat off and laid on his knee and continued wiping sweat from his brow. Thing of it was, he then said, and he laughed afterward, as old Custer's men's got theirs even after we run off. Very loud, distant tree knock. How so, I asked. They set fire to our camp, he said, and one of our caissons exploded. And they thought we shooting artillery at him, and in the confusion they started shooting each other. This guy was good, or at least he'd read the history marker at the Rio Hill Shopping Center down in Charlottesville and memorized it, the same as me. The Battle of Rio Hill took place in Charlottesville on February 28, 1864. General George A. Custer had taken 1,500 Union troops and surprised a very small regiment of Confederate soldiers camped out on the banks of the Ravana River. The rebels knew they were outnumbered, so they fled, just like this guy was saying in his story. But the thing was, I knew it was a story, nothing more, nothing less, and most locals know it because it happened locally. Well, I said, now laughing myself, at least that guy got his at Little Bighorn out in Montana a dozen years later. Huh? The kid said, and he looked up at me, and the look in his eyes made me take a step back. This was no act. He didn't know what in the name of all things holy I was talking about. He wouldn't know anything about that, a voice said from behind me. I turned quickly, and son of a gun, there was that old rascal, Jim Brown. He was walking through the tree line from the cemetery, making his way to us. That hasn't happened yet in his time. Why, Jim Brown, you son of a gun, I said, you owe me a story. I know I do, he said. It's why I came, but it looks like I've got more pressing matters here at hand. After he said this, he looked over at the young man in the Confederate uniform sitting on the stove length. I'm here to take you home, he said. I think I am home, the kid said. It just doesn't look the same. Come with me, Jim Brown said, offering the kid his hand. The kid took it and Jim Brown helped him up. I'll be back for you, Jim Brown then said to me. I ain't holding hands and going nowhere with you, Jim Brown, I told him, and I was starting to maybe figure this guy out. He wasn't a thief, like I'd originally thought. I was getting the impression that he's one of those guys who are into other guys, if you know what I mean. I'm talking about the story, Jim Brown said, the one I owe you. Oh, I said. I'll come back on Halloween, he said. That'll be too late, Jim Brown, I said, and I was angry. Something about this guy just ticked me off. Every time he came around and I got close to him, I began to feel enraged. You know I gotta have all these stories ready well before then. I'll be back in four days. Jim Brown said, but where we're going, it'll be Halloween. What does that even mean, Jim Brown? I said as Jim Brown and the guy out for the reenactment began walking toward the tree line, the very tree line with the overgrown cemetery inside, the very tree line Jim Brown had just stepped out of. I heard a car horn and I turned to see my wife and one of her friends coming up the driveway. They'd been out shopping and eating and having a good old time. I turned to the tree line to tell Jim Brown to hang around long enough to finally meet my beautiful bride, a.k.a. Giggly Girl. But just like that, he and the reenactment player were gone. How convenient. The end. Told you that one was short. We had quite a bit of activity going on too in the background during the reading. I heard one loud scream, but it happened as I was speaking. So I don't know if you guys were able to pick it up or not. 28, 29, 30, four more days, guys. We got four more October nights left and then it's Halloween. So again, for books available on Amazon, but if you can't afford it, just keep coming back four more nights. I'm going to read the rest of the stories. I think the rest I'm able to, to read on here. Um, but again, there are five Bigfoot Sasquatch. Files, volumes. I've got to remember to edit that title and get that on there. So many people's going to be pissed. You wait. I'm coming up with the Christmas gift of the season. And it's really going to piss people off when I start promoting it on here. We're going to get a Halloween behind us, but I'm going to have a very big surprise. So keep coming back. Um, thanks for your support, everybody that actually buys what I write, especially the Bigfoot Sasquatch files things. Um, 
five is, is, I will say this about it, it is definitely some of the most unique writing I've ever done. Some crazy stories in that one. All right, see you for more next time.